So this this spring had come off, which I mean, it was on the shaft, and I was like, I couldn't figure out how this would work. Uh, I was like, you know, how does, was this on this shaft? You know, I mean, there's, I mean, there's there's a clip on here that holds it and everything, so it just kind of sits there. So yeah, in theory, it would be like, and I started one. I'm going well. This thing would wear out, you know, I mean, I don't see no wear marks in here because it would go in, in between here. And last night I was just kind of laying there going, I know it was on that shaft. Well, no wonder there's no wear marks. This whole thing spins, the spring and everything, so. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, I'm going to try to put this in again. I took these bolts out. Keep dropping everything here. Oops, see, it comes out again. Okay, I gotta hold these three. Put my fingers down in there. They keep falling out. back in the same holes. Okay. I have to figure out a better way to do this. I'll figure it out. Oh jeez. Figured out the secret. Just tilt it up and push it down. Rather than trying to do it upside down like that. Now it's in there. Now at the beginning of this video you saw me drop this little pin. I have it on this little magnet here. Well, I mean, I knew about the little pin, but it didn't seem like it fell from where I thought the little pin and other where I thought it went. But it, uh, but it did. Um, apparently they just come out all the time. <laughs> it actually goes, there's a hole way, it's in this little, it's in this hole here. It's in the back of there. You gotta stick it in there. That's the bypass that uh, when you, you know, when you want to freewheel and you pull the button to freewheel it, it pushes this out. So that fell out. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna tip the transmission up like this, and that way this pin will stay in better when I'm putting it in. I think some people use a little bit of grease or something, which we'll see. I may or may not do that. So I'm having a devil of a time keeping that pin in there. I'll try this again. Maybe I got a plan here. Now the smooth side goes up. I'm going to put this gear on here, or this the brake thing. I'm try. See, there's that pin right. That you can't barely see it. Just sticking out. I put a little grease on it. There's a washer under here too. Well, it fits in there too. So. push on this gear and try to keep it up this way so the pin doesn't come back out spring pressure here. That's the problem. That's 
gonna fit down over the shaft for the for the uh, three wheeler. Anything I got to worry about is if the freewheeler, if that pin fell out. And this is how I'll tell. If this, if this pushes out, because it was uh, open, if this pushes out, I'm good. It's either, I don't know why it would move a little bit. It's either not in or it's not. It's in. So why would it move a little bit? I do uh, Let's. It just kind of falls off. Unless I got this pin in wrong or something. I don't think so. Now that's working. Uh, what I did was is I ended up tightening these bolts out down and then those uh, there's like inserts that slide it down into the case and it pushed it a little bit further um, like in in here. So there's the gap. It's hard to tell here like Let's see. If I take this piece of paper here, I don't like it. I can put this piece of paper down in there. See, it just kind of goes right in there now. Now I'll take, I'll turn it off. So you can't get the paper out. So there, it's working. That is a bear. I just used that grease. And uh, okay, that's good. And uh, these are these aren't tightened all the way. They're just I just got them down so the inserts would sink. Still wanted to, I didn't want to put them all in in case I had to you know take it all back out again for that bypass. So yeah, that is not fun. You got to like. You gotta hold this, this this thing from falling off, and then you gotta like hold here just on this plate. It like like one of these numbers. I don't know. It it, it it's just it's just tough. Hopefully I caught it on film how I did it, cause boy I don't even remember. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque the rest of these bolts down. These big bolts are. Uh, Thirty-three to forty-seven foot pounds. So I'll just put maybe like a forty or something, because they look like it got some pretty deep threads. So I'm not too worried about those. Um, anyway, I'll move on. Okay, so that's all done. I'll drop these in here. And I went. There's a wear groove so just like so there's the wear so actually that's not wear it's actually sticks up weird Works, so there you go. Of course, this thing. 
option here. Like so. Okay. So I was looking at this and it looked a little like it was up like this. This end looked higher than this. Well, this bearing, it wasn't down in its there's a little spot for it to fit down in there. There's like a little lip, like right here, and it wasn't down in there all the way. Let's see if I can show you how it moves a little bit. So, you'll see that this bearing has to fit down inside there. And then there's like a little lip on this side that holds the bearing from from coming out that way. Otherwise, it's not going to be down in there correctly. Let me see if I tighten this back up. See if it, see if it goes down. Looks like it's down now, but it's... needs to go in a little bit more. Anyway, be careful with that bearing. It's got to go in a little bit further. Okay, I got it all straightened out now. Good thing I checked that. That's something, you know, it just had to go in a little bit more to seat that down. And I noticed once I tightened it down a little bit, it didn't look like the gap was even around. It looked like it was just a, when it was, when I turned it on the freewheel. It looked like the gap was bigger at the bottom than it was at the top. Now it looks even. This is you can hear it. It's, it's freewheel. As you can hear it producing now, squeaking. And this is with the pressure off. It's, it's, the gap's all nice top and bottom now. So if you put it together and you got to, once you tight, once you tighten it down a little bit, and you check the free wheel, if it doesn't look even all you know all the way down through and up around the top when you put it on free wheel, I bet you this bearing over here, you didn't push it in quite far enough because there's like a little tiny at the bottom of this case. It, the, here's the bearing, and it sets. It sits down just in this little lip. There's a little lip that sticks up. I can't show you. It's up underneath of here, up under, straight down at the bottom, and it kind of sets in there, so it doesn't. So it's not able to go out. And it was just on top of that little thing. It's just. It's not very big, but it's enough that it would misalign everything. I was just happened to be looking at it. I was like, wait, well, this. This thing didn't look, I mean, get, get this does move, but it looked even more out of alignment than it should be. So, yeah, just make sure you got that right. Now i got to put this in here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn it. I think I'm going to turn this shaft. So... If it falls, it don't fall down inside there. That would be that would be bad. There's something to grab hold of it with here. I 
I made the holes this way for this pin. That pin it hangs out in there. To uh, there's a couple little marks here. They were up before, so I'll put them up. The pin stayed in there, so be good there. And then this is the other one. Is, underneath is a uh, smile, and then the top is a upside down frown. A frown, actually. Set up like that? Well, maybe it does. Oh no, there we go. It fits flush there. Yeah, it's sitting on top of the sits on top of the gear there. You can look down there and see it's sitting on top of the gear. It's, it's flush. I'm gonna pull this off just so I can see what it looks like. Yeah, that's right. Now I went around and uh, the filter uh, is on there, the spring cap. I took the spring off, I just left the filter on, and then I flipped the pan over just to make sure, you know, that I had everything lined up, nothing was sticking up. I mean, it was fine. Every The pan sealed all the way around. You know, I just tentatively, I just wanted to make sure everything was right. And, uh, Cleaned out with acetone. I scraped this old RTV off. And if you notice, there's like little channels in here. Dug down in them, scraped them out. Wiped it down with acetone. Get, all, get any oil off. I noticed this here on the old case. Didn't see any sealant down in there. So it's, it's still sealed in here. I'm just using the same one. It was clean. So, And then uh, this magnet which will just fall out i about i don't know about three hours ago i just put some of the um i'm using this permatex ultra gray maxim torque gasket maker uh, rigid torque high vibration applications uh it's oil doesn't affect it uh i put it down in there and uh just to attach the magnet down in there. It's because when you flip it over, it would have just fell out. Matter of fact, when I took it apart, I don't know if you noticed, but the magnet was like, I had no idea where it went. It, it like stuck to this metal thing. And then I found out there's like a slot in, in the bottom of this pan, but it, it's real loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the gasket stuff on here, on here and uh, the, 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 the directions say, uh, Put it on, go ahead and stick it down, and then uh, just finger tighten the bolts. Then after an hour, torque them to their, uh, where they're supposed to be after an hour, and then wait 24 hours, and then you can put oil in it. I got these all lined up here. That's them, that one, that one. And I marked the ones that's got threads in it already. So I knew which ones would be easier. 
to get started here. So they want you to finger tighten this just to get it lined up, I guess. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I put the the RTV already on there. Okay, there it is, all uh, hand tightened them, finger tightened them down until it's seated, and then I waited about an hour, and then they're torqued. You can see the stuff oozing out of here. They're all in now. Here's a couple shots of it, of these brackets I put on, how they go. here but it's, it's basically ready to come off you can actually see light down through there let's see I'll pull the light under there see the light That's how cracked it is yeah you can see it good now so yeah that thing didn't have a whole lot holding it on there Here's a shot of the top. Now go ahead and put the oil in it. I guess you're supposed to fill it all the way. Well, from what I read, to the bottom of these threads here. And then this, well, you, uh, this, I would say, fill it all the way to the top. Or at least until it comes to right there. Because it has a reservoir on it, so you obviously want that full okay um, now I had to take uh, I had to take the transmission back out of the mower because it was leaking now it was leaking from the pan and I couldn't quite understand why but uh, I figured out what it was because I took it back out of there and I don't know if you can see it there is a hairline crack here there's a little it, it goes right along there it's real small but it leaks so I was gonna weld it and I was like well I just went ahead and ordered a new one it wasn't terribly expensive so like a hundred and low hundred hundred and something um, so I ordered a new one, and I ran into a problem because I scraped it all, you know, and I wanted to do a dry fit, so I, I made sure that, you know, I didn't somehow crack that when I was putting it on by, you know, something was binding in here, because I, I don't, I didn't do a dry fit the last time, so I wanted to do a dry fit on this one, you know, just to make sure everything was all good and everything, so I, I put it on there like this. Now. Now, I went through, you know, beating it down and all that, and, and I was checking all around here. And back here, there is a, on the edge here, all the way around here, you can see this thing, it moves. And it moves quite a bit. And uh, no matter what I did, holding it down, hitting it with a rubber hammer, you know, one of these, I couldn't get it any closer than like 32 thousandths back here. 
the gap wouldn't close any more than 32 thousandths. So they sent me another one, and same deal. And I couldn't figure out what was going on with it. So, I mean, otherwise, I would have tried tightening this down just to see if it closed up, but I didn't want to res be responsible for cracking one of these cases. So they told me, they said, you know what, go ahead and, you know, just dry. I, I put down in the big bolts, and then I went around the edges and everything, and I and it did. I mean, it went from 30 thousandths, probably there's a little spot over here that's maybe 10 thousandths. And I told them, you know, it was about 10 thousandths, and they said, their engineer said that, that it's fine, uh, that it's, it's okay if it's 10 thousandths. It might even cinch down even more once I put all the bolts in, but it closed up significantly. So... I don't know, just just the thing, when you make sure you do a dry fit before you, you know, put these together, just to make sure, because that turned out to be, I sort of waited around for a week, went back and forth to try to figure that out before I actually, they said, go ahead and try to tighten it and see if it closed, and it did uh, substantially, so uh, that's what they told me to do, I, I wouldn't have done it on my own because I didn't want to bust it, but... So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, you know, put the sealant on. They said, uh, it says on the instructions, uh, an eighth inch bead, which isn't very big. It says a sixteenth to an eighth inch. So I'll, I'll just go with the eighth inch bead. And I got the regular tough torque sealant. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I got to put uh, some of the stuff that doesn't come with these, like the caps and different things. Uh, and I got new O-rings down here. And also... I ended up having to get another uh, of the input shaft seals because I must have put that on wonky and I noticed it was leaking a little bit from up there. So, and it's not, it's, they're very cheap from actually directly from Tough Work. I think it was like two, three dollars maybe for a new input shaft seal. And I, and it's not leaking anymore. So just make sure that you wrap that with black tape and, and slide it down. I actually ended up making a, uh, this on my lathe it's you can see there's a little edge down here so when I put it down on there it, it seated it exactly flat instead of at an angle but and I don't know I didn't do that to begin with I just used like a socket like something like this you know that was big enough to put it in there but this one you know it just fits on the shaft so it doesn't allow it to get out of you know, out of whack um, but yeah, it's not leaking now, so because there's oil down in that channel, and before it would just drip, 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 even just with this you know little bit of oil that was in here, and uh, so yeah, just make sure when you put those shaft seals on that you follow that that black tape method, and you get them in you know perfectly straight. Otherwise, you can you know it's like a waste of time. You got to put another one in, and then, and if it's an input shaft like that, and it's not one of these outer seals on the axles. You gotta take transmission out to get to that. So, you know, just so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this all back together. Now I got an entire new case. So, you know, what are you gonna do? I mean, I never, I didn't see that hairline crack before, but it was dripping like I don't know, like a drip every, I don't know, three, four hours. But you know, that's not right. I, I wanted it right, so I'm, I made sure that now it'll be, it'll be good. Okay, and on this uh, these side plugs, they're just uh, as you can see, they are uh, see it's smooth in there. So I'm going to reuse these. So I want to take them out carefully rather than pry them out on the edge with the screwdriver. I just used a socket that just fits in the hole there, and uh, put a little plate. There's actually happens to be like two mounting brackets here that will keep it out. So it'll be, it'll allow this thing to uh, once I tighten this C clamp up it'll just push it out so it should eliminate any damage to it then there's this one other one it is a screw so wow. <clears throat> as you can see it is here and it's threaded so I'll take that out too I just wanted to show that real quick because I could I didn't I didn't know how I was going to get it out but I think that this is probably the best way rather than tearing up the outside lip said there's the this happens to be a nice little level place to uh, put just like a metal plate so there's enough room underneath there to let them come out 
Okay, so here it is. And it looks pretty good. Um, so. Should be good to go. I actually bought new O-rings for this. I put some grease on them and greased them and then pushed that in. And then there's those two plugs there. Actually, I probably would buy those. I would I would buy those if I was going to, you know, if I would have thought ahead cuz I don't know. Those don't seem something like you should reuse. I don't know. They they press fit in there, but uh, you know, just with a hammer or whatever. But it was like, you know, the last three or four millimeters. But I mean, if they hold, they hold. I mean, if they come out, basically, I'll just have to buy new ones and it'll be a mess and I'll have to refill it. But yeah, I would, if I was going to change this again, I would buy these two plugs here. This one, nah, it's got an O-ring on it. Um, it looked fine. It came out and just creased it and creased the O-ring and put it back in. So yeah, now I just got to put the oil in it. It's it's been you know it's been overnight next day it's been a good i don't know probably 20 hours everything's just firm though 